episode 00, zero how it all began you're here because you want more more engagement more delight more fun more learning you're hungry for change and willing to take action if you're not prepared to be wrong you'll never come up with anything original welcome to the e-learning scenario design podcast with anna sabramowitz i'm gonna show you how great i am let's take learning to the next level well this is kind of neat because it's like a conversation I get to have with somebody, somebody on the other side. It's kind of neat. Anyways, so uh, my name is Anna Bramwitz, and this is my episode 01 on Anchor. So what I wanted to talk about today is, I wanted to talk about it very briefly, and it's just how I got here and kind of the journey that I'm going through. So uh, I'm an instructional designer by trade, and there's there's been like so many times where like I've looked at really cool stuff like uh that that other people had built like Michael Allen's e-learning which has won some huge awards and I bought all his books and they were really cool but every single place that I worked at was kind of like just really surrounded by people who just didn't think that we could do that kind of stuff that you needed to be like a big agency to you know, to actually create stuff that was meaningful and, and interactive and, and engaging the way that, you know, a lot of those, those big production companies can do. And so I remember actually working at this one place and it was a, uh, a university, a university or college. And we had all these Michael Allen books about engagement and creating this like super awesome e-learning. And one of the other instructional designers said, picked up one of the books, looked at me and said, yeah, this is cool, but this isn't anything like we're going to do around here. Okay. Like basically just said, uh, put that dream aside. Cause we're just going to put together some nasty stuff. And guess what? <sighs> we totally did. <laughs> and I remember later leaving, uh, leaving that one place. And, uh, I was lucky enough, like after I, after I moved out to uh, British Columbia that I was like, Hey, you know, I think I can like be a person who does, does her own thing, does her own businesses, her own boss. And so I teamed up with my husband, Ryan, and we said, Hey, let's do this. And so one of our first gigs was actually uh, putting together some, uh, learning modules for, um, for like an electrical college or something. And what happened is they were like, we have this tons of this content and it's really like ugly. Uh, can you make it, can you put it together in an articulate storyline? And, and so we were like, why not? You know, this is, let's build it out. And so, uh, Ryan, whose background is in website design and, um, and is really, he's, he's been, very much interested in things like usability, the user experience, um, you know, how does somebody interact with, uh, with something, uh, online? Is it easy? Is it, does it scale? Is it, um, is it enjoyable? Is it fun? Right. Is it beautiful? So obviously his inspirations were like Steve Jobs and Apple, right? <laughs> and that other guy, uh, Jonathan Ives, I think. Anyways, uh, but you know, so we were both working on this project and it's just, it's so, it's so horrible. Like if I look back at it now, I think, my God, I can't believe we put that stuff together because I'm just like, I'm like, this is just text with narration and even the cool graphics after a while, you're like, oh, it's so painful. It's so, it's so shitty. <laughs> and then what happened is I just, I was like, there must be something better. Like there must be something more engaging out there that we could do. And I thought, what could we do? So it was kind of weird and lucky because I was putting together videos on YouTube because I have my own YouTube channel. And uh, also we were part of like the Articulate community and Tom Coleman, who is like, you know, the head dude of the Articulate, or maybe you don't know, of the Articulate community says, hey, we've got a beta group for this new, interactive, awesome Articulate storyline. Oh, sorry. That's when Storyline was launched, actually. And uh, 
before that, I think that Articulate was actually just like one of those add-ons in like a Word or PowerPoint um, piece. So it wasn't yet like the full Monty that it is now. So we got all excited and we were like, you know, what if we could do something really cool with this software? And they were like, let's, you know, just be creative and submit your project and maybe we, you know, and you'll be up, put up for the, for the awards. And our drive wasn't really like this award, which is you get to win the guru award if they select your, your, um, project from all the submissions. And it was like, I think it's actually a really cool way to launch software. It's like put people in a beta group, launch the software with them and then say, launch it to the public and say, Hey, uh, we're trying to promote this, the features of, of how magical this can be. Um, everybody put in a, uh, your project and the, you know, the top people who we think would be, are using it in the best way, um, in the most engaging way will win this award. And also I got to tell you, you also got an iPad back then. That was cool. <laughs> so, so we went for it and Okay, so it was hard because all of a sudden I was like, wow, I can actually I can actually make this product do whatever I want. I don't have to answer to anyone's restrictions. I don't have to fight with anybody who thinks that, you know, something's not fun or no, that things are too fun. That's usually the, the point is that people think that things are too fun or that's not our image like like their brand image has anything to do with the way people learn. It's just so frustrating. So, uh, and Ryan is just like all over the whole engagement, how to make this work, you know, and he's all excited about the software. And I'm like, dude, we got to make it. We got to do this right. We got to do this. We got to do this learner centered. And he's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I want to build a comic book. And I was like, no, listen, we got to, It there's got to be like, it's got to be, focused on action, focused on consequences, and it's it's got to be learner driven. And he's like, "Okay, tell me what that what that means." And so we collaborated on it, and he added all these elements that just I was like, "This is so cool because he's he's this huge nerd. He wants to come up with like, you know, uh comic book ideas." And I'm like, "Okay, well, it looks fun, looks cool." I guess. And then, and then I'm like, okay, well, what do you need me to do? And he's like, well, I need you to go and get, you know, a hot pink shirt and a hot blue shirt. I'm going to wear the blue. You're going to wear the pink. Here's the, the, we're going to tape a bunch of videos. And basically we're, we're going to take the learner through this story arc. And, and I'm like, okay. And how are we going to do that? He's like, we're going to, we're going to, incorporate video and and by the way you have to get a blonde wig <laughs> and I was like oh okay so we filmed all these videos and you know what it actually went way faster than I thought it would because we did so much planning up ahead of time um and it, it really it was like a month project it, in our spare time too because obviously we had other projects to work on and I I don't know. I, I got to tell you, I was like, I was petrified. I was uh, scared we were going to be embarrassed. I was scared that people were going to laugh because it was, you know, like not only did I put all of my ideas that I actually wanted to use because all these people that had influenced me all this time, but all of a sudden we had this software that I could actually do it. But also I wanted to apply all these things that had never been that I had never been able to apply because all those things were, uh, you know, not, not the right fit, uh, or, or they just pushed, pushed people in the wrong way because they were scared to try things. And so, <laughs> and also I had worn a wig and, you know, recorded myself acting kind of like a, like a bully bitch. So, um, yeah, that was like, I really thought it was, um, it was going to be pretty, pretty horrendous. And, and, uh, and if anything, I was like, oh, I'm glad we're not, you know, we're not like working for a huge company because then I'd probably lose my job <laughs> if they saw this. So, um, 
so then we launched. We submitted it and we won a guru award. And it was actually it was actually just really surprising how much people responded to it and I got an iPad which is the coolest thing ever and one of the things that was actually really cool and I and it almost it's one of the reasons why I just love what I love to do and it it kind of just reignited this fire uh, under my butt that the things that we make um, you know, people, people say, oh, you know, I'm not going to have an impact, but there has been over, over a thousand people that have gone through that little, little seven minute module. Uh, it's called broken coworker. And if you search for it, you'll find it. Um, you should be able to anyways. And so I got emails from people that the the premise of the the whole e-learning module is that you take on the basically you, you you walk through the story of of this guy who's bullied at work by his by his co- uh, coworker and the the idea is to help him build up confidence so instead of just being completely reactive I don't want to give it away because I if you haven't gone through broken coworker then you really should because I think it's super fun. I mean, I still go through it and I laugh. It makes me, it's funny. The consequences are interesting. Like it's just, and it, there's like, it's like a drama. It's awesome. So I got emails from people, random strangers who are like, you know, I wish I would have seen this when I was actually at work because I think I would have handled myself better if I actually worked through this first. Like, can you believe it? Like people actually like responded to it the right way and then uh th- I just thought this is so cool this like I'm actually like somebody felt something and f- it didn't they didn't even they weren't even forced to do it and some people actually a lot of people went through the learning and they were like the consequences were so interesting that I went through it several times just to experience different consequences and outcomes to see what would happen if I approached things differently. And I was like, this is solid. Like, this is the kind of stuff I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to create things where people will want to go through them, even if they don't have to, because simply because they are enjoying the process so much. And it's actually making them think, maybe I could take a different route. How cool is that, right? So basically right now all I'm doing is I'm just refining this process because I realized that after um after you know we won the guru award for broken coworker a lot of people tried to submit copies and or simulations of of that kind of model and we were like oh okay well maybe it's just this so we got lucky or maybe it's the look or maybe it's the comic book style but really, it's all those things, but it's none of those things. Because the piece that makes it solid is how contextual, how relevant you make it to the person who's going through it. And how compelling is that story? Because you could make that story work and then we've done it. We've created out-of-the-box ugly demos, but the story is interesting enough that people would still want to know, hey, this is the way I would react if somebody like came up and started massaging my back. So the compelling, the, it, it's a combo of like having this really good pillar content uh, for your e-learning stuff that like scenarios that are really meaningful and people are like, oh, I could see myself doing that. Oh, I wonder if I would react the same way if I was in that situation. So having them think about that. And when you dis- when you design learning where the context and scenarios is so provocative that and it connects with your learner, then everything else becomes the icing, the gravy, the the decoration, which enhances the experience. It's not that it doesn't. It really does because a well put to- well put together experience can stay with you for like I think years because I've seen some some e-learning that has been so awesome 
that I, I still remember it. I don't know if it's because I just live and breathe this world and that's all I want to talk about and think about. I mean, there's other things, obviously, like if you see some of my YouTube videos, there's just, there's just a, a mix of ridiculous uh, plant stuff, but you know, that's, that's another story. Anyways, yeah, so I just wanted to share that with you and, and uh, I just wanted to also explore more the, the ideas that um, learning, uh, especially for adults, does not have to be boring, does not have to be branded, does not have to be corporate. And we have to talk to people like they're our peers, not like they're some sort of subordinates or, or children, even children. We don't talk to children this way. So just have more respect, have more empathy for the people that we're designing the learning for and also the people that we're designing the learning with, the subject matter experts that we need to work with them to pull out these cool stories, these cool scenarios, because they're the ones who are going to give it to us if we're nice and if we treat them with respect. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and maybe um, I'll see you and on my YouTube channel or maybe you will just you know, show up here next time and I'll have a new recording about some other thing that inspired me to do what I do, which is design e-learning scenarios and help people design their own. Talk to you soon. Bye. This is the e-learning scenario design podcast with Anna Sabramowitz.